AMD's first-generation Ryzen processors are just over a year old, being introduced in March of 2017. Codenamed Summit Ridge, these processors prove to have excellent performance in heavily multi-threaded applications, such as video encoding and 3D rendering, thanks to having significantly more cores than the equivalent-priced Intel processor. This April, AMD is following up these processors with the second-generation Ryzen CPUs, codenamed Pinnacle Ridge. In this video, we'll go into detail on what has changed under the hood, plus benchmark all the new CPUs so you can see how much of an improvement has been made and how they stack up against the competition from Intel. The underlying architecture of all modern AMD processors is Zen, with a new and improved version known as Zen Plus forming the basis of the second-gen Pinnacle Ridge CPUs. Key improvements in Zen Plus are a 13% reduction in level 1 cache latency, a 34% reduction in level 2 cache latency, a 16% reduction in level 3 cache latency, and an 11% reduction in system memory latency. Combined together, these improvements are supposed to boost the IPC performance instructions per clock by around 3%. These are all welcome improvements, but probably the most noticeable change is a die shrink, with second-gen Ryzen's being made using a new 12 nanometer process versus the 14 nanometer process used to make first-gen Ryzen's. The smaller manufacturing process has several benefits. First, AMD has been able to ramp up the clock speed of the second-gen Ryzen's by several hundred megahertz, and second, the new CPUs use less power. In addition, the die shrink should give the new CPUs more overclocking headroom, something we'll take a look at later in this video. The other big change under the bonnet is Precision Boost 2. This is a marked improvement over Precision Boost 1 used by first-gen Ryzen processors. This is because the first version had only two profiles. One profile when up to two cores were in demand, and a second profile when up to three cores were under load. This meant that workloads using three cores would only boost the same frequency as a workload using all the cores, helping to explain why first-gen Ryzen processors weren't nearly as good for gaming as Intel CPUs. Precision Boost 2, however, has a more granular profile, with second-gen Ryzen CPUs boosting far higher than a first-gen Ryzen, when a moderate number of cores are in demand. This can be seen in the diagram on screen. This is key for games which typically use 2 to 4. For instance, in the second gen Ryzen 7 2700X can potentially boost around 500 MHz higher than the first gen Ryzen 7 1800X under these sorts of conditions. Like the current first gen Ryzen processors, the new second gen Ryzen processors use the Socket AM4 packaging. And as you can see from the outside, they look more or less identical. Unlike Intel, which likes to change socket or the pinout with almost every generation, AMD's new chips are compatible with existing socket AM4 motherboards. The only thing you'll need to do is update the BIOS first. Although you don't need to change motherboard, thanks AMD, you'll still see some new motherboards as the new X470 chipset has been added to the range. This offers improved power management over the existing X370 chipset, plus a new feature, Store.mi, a caching technology which fuses together two storage devices into a single volume, intelligently moving data to the faster drive. Unlike the initial Ryzen launch, which was staggered over several months, AMD is launching all of the second-gen Ryzen 7s and Ryzen 5s at once. In this tech spec, we're going to take a closer look at this new second-gen Ryzen processors, to find out how good they really are. As per the table on screen, the two new second-gen Ryzen 7 processors run up to 300 megahertz faster than the first-gen CPUs. But apart from that, the specs are very similar. At launch, the 2700X is the fastest second-gen Ryzen with no sign of a 2800X. But even so, the 2700X is a big step up from the 1800X. As per the table on screen, the two new second-gen Ryzen 5 processors run up to 200 MHz faster than the first-gen CPUs, but apart from that, the specs are very similar. However, as you'll see from the performance results, the architectural changes that AMD has made make a big difference. We put all four of the second-gen Ryzen CPUs through their paces, not only against the first-gen Ryzen chips, but also Intel's latest 8th-gen i7, i5 and i3 processors. 
To make the comparison as fair as possible, all the systems were tested in a very similar configuration, with the same CPU, cooler, graphics card and RAM. We chose the ASUS motherboards because these are some of the most popular boards with scanned customers. Speaking of memory, while Intel CPUs are happy to run with 3000 MHz memory, Ryzen CPUs still seem to struggle with anything above 2666 MHz. However, in all other regards, the test configuration was the same. The first performance test we ran on all the CPUs was the image editing program GIMP, which is part of the RealBench benchmark suite. GIMP is only single-threaded, so historically has favoured Intel CPUs due to their higher IPC and frequency. For instance, the first-gen Ryzen 7 1700X was a significant 18% slower than the Core i7 8700K. However, AMD has managed to close that gap to just 5%, with the second-gen Ryzen 7 2700X a very welcome improvement. In conclusion, whilst there remains a measurable performance difference in GIMP between Intel and AMD's processors, the gap is now very small. Next up was encoding an H.264 video using Handbrake. This uses all available cores and so it should come as no surprise that with more cores on offer, 8 versus 6, when comparing Ryzen 7 with Core i7, the AMD processors come out best. With the improvements in the second gen Ryzen 7 processors, AMD's performance lead is extended even further. The multitasking test in RealBench runs several applications in parallel, so it's not only very processor intensive, but it also runs better on systems with fast memory. As expected, Intel's Core i5 and i7 processors recorded the four fastest scores in this benchmark, with a big 14% difference between the Core i7 8700K and Ryzen 7 2700X. Clearly, AMD, motherboard and RAM manufacturers still have quite a lot of work to do with optimising memory for Ryzen. This graph shows the overall score achieved in the real bench benchmark suite, i.e. the GIMP image editing test, video encoding using handbrake and multitasking test. It paints an interesting picture with the Ryzen 7 2700X taking pole position, the first time we've ever seen an AMD processor achieve the fastest overall score, a big milestone for the Zen architecture. The Cinebench benchmark is based on the popular modelling, animating and rendering application Cinema 4D and measures how quickly a CPU can render a complex 3D scene. With more cores and threads than the Intel CPUs, it should come as no surprise that Ryzen processors are extremely adept at this sort of task. The second gen Ryzen processors extend this lead even further with a very welcome 10% performance increase from the first gen Ryzen 7 1800X to the second gen Ryzen 7 2700X. The biggest Achilles heel of first gen Ryzen processors was their game performance. Whilst the second gen Ryzen's are noticeably better than the first gen Ryzen's, with an average 8% performance increase in the 3D Mark Firestrike benchmark, Intel's Core i7 processors are still king of the hill in this benchmark. Intel's Core processors also proved fastest when we benchmarked all the CPUs in Far Cry 5, with a noticeable lead over the Ryzen's in both the average and minimum frame rate. That said, all these CPUs are very powerful and more capable of running the latest Far Cry game at a smooth frame rate. The final benchmark we ran on all the CPUs was the Heaven Gaming benchmark. Interestingly, unlike 3 d Mark Firestrike or Far Cry 5, the Ryzen processors snuck ahead of Intel's core CPUs. This shows how differently 3D engines perform with different processor architectures, and that while on average Intel CPUs are faster for gaming, AMD processors are still a great choice for a gaming PC. Overclocking, not to be confused with AMD Precision Boost or Intel Turbo Boost, is a method of manually increasing the clock frequency of a CPU to improve its performance. You do need a good quality CPU cooler, motherboard, power supply and a little bit of luck with overclocking, but it's a great way of getting more from your PC. A typical overclock for a first-gen Ryzen processor was up to 3.8 GHz, but our second-gen Ryzen CPUs would overclock stably to between 4 GHz and 4.2 GHz. This is a very welcome improvement, and it shows that the die shrink from the 14 nanometer to 12 nanometer process really does pay dividends. However, the performance gains to be had from overclocking the second-gen Ryzen's processors are much smaller than you could be forgiven for thinking. For instance, 
performance, the Ryzen 5 2600X, which we overclocked from 3.6 to 4.2 gigahertz, only gained an extra 5% performance when video encoding and a 7% higher minimum frame rate in Far Cry 5. However, this makes sense when you consider that the new Precision Boost 2 technology in second gen Ryzen's is so much better than the first version, enabling the CPU to automatically boost under a wider range of conditions than first gen Ryzen's. AMD's first gen Ryzen processors proved a nasty shock to Intel, proving demonstrably faster in many heavily multi threaded workloads, although Intel still retained the lead when it came to IPC and frequency. AMD's second gen Ryzen's have proven to be considerably more refined than the first gen models, with improved IPC, higher clock speeds and welcome improvements in manual and automatic overclocking. And whilst the ghost of Ryzen's lacklustre game performance isn't entirely banished, the second gen Ryzen's are much faster than first gen Ryzen's in games. As always, the choice you make should be determined by what you're intending to use your PC for. But it's clear from our tests that the second gen Ryzen's offer much more rounded performance than the first gen Ryzen's. Value for money wise, the second gen Ryzen's look very competitive too, with the Ryzen 7 2700X for instance retailing for a very similar price to the Core i7 8700K. What's more, AMD has taken the very customer friendly approach of sticking with the same processor socket and chipsets with the new second gen Ryzen's, although it would be interesting to see how motherboards based on the new X470 chipset perform. Scan Computers sells the complete range of AMD Ryzen processors and compatible motherboards, while our expert engineers in 3XS systems can build you an awesome new Ryzen PC. Check out the full range at scan.co.uk. Thanks for watching this test spec. Please let us know your thoughts on second gen Ryzen processors in the comments section below.